Hi guys, it's your girl Natalie, the one true diamond. Coming at you with just a little inspiration this morning. Offering a little ray of hope for somebody who might be going through. And y'all know I've been driving this car for a while and there is my check engine lights on it's time for my inspection i can't get it inspected until i get it fixed which means i have to get my van fixed before i can put this one in the shop to get fixed this one is going to cost me over six hundred dollars to get that one thing fixed and the guy was like the location of where is um located at and it's like instead of spark plugs i got i think they're called power packs might not be what it's called but that's kind of what it is and my number two is misfiring so he said i might as well replace them all because eventually they're gonna have to be replaced if i replace them all now then i don't have to pay somebody an extra 100 to 200 dollars to take it back down and put them in like that so that did make sense i'm gonna replace all of those and like I said, it's gonna be over $600 for that. So my van, my pressure hose on my power steering pump is messed up. And everybody that has been promising to come fix it, to look at it, when they find out that it's a four wind star, they kind of been backing off, like backtracking. And I think because it's a difficult to get through and you gotta take down a lot of stuff just to get to it. So nobody really wants to bother it you know when you get little um i call these side mechanics they don't really have an a business or an official business but they do have shops you know what i'm saying them is what i'm talking about back in the day they were called not shade tree mechanic i think they're a step up from the shade tree mechanic because i guess they do got a business because they have a shop so they do have a business but anyway i don't think they really want to mess with it whatever whatever, whatever. One man who did have a business came and told it, took it to his shop, and called Derek back and said he couldn't fix it. I'm like, why would you take something if you knew you couldn't fix it? But I'm like, Ugh. anyway, so he called this other shop that's gonna fix it, and it's gonna cost me three hundred and something dollars to get that hose put on. And I'm like, which means we gotta double buy the hose because this shop said they don't use a hose. From somebody else which we bought the hose from quest auto supply store but they still would not take it they're gonna order it they're gonna put the hose on so that's double paying for the hose I told Derek that he needed to take it back see if he could take that hose back and get the money for it because you know that's we should if we replace it we're not gonna need another one anytime soon okay so um so anyway, the ray of hope I'm telling you guys. I'm like, man, this is Christmas time. And you know, y'all know I've been spending. I've been, well, not buying. I've been, I have been spending. And I still had, I wanted to add some extra things on. But now I'm not going to do it because of this one reason. You know, it has learned me to stop. What you got is enough. Your grandkids don't need anything else. So it has truly helped me to stop. Um the madness and you know we won't worry about it because we can do it we can go into funds that we have saved or things that we were planning on doing y'all know we was talking about doing the covered porch digging into that money to fix vehicles because we need vehicles I need to get to work to be able to do my keep of the household and you know and it's just and he needs his car so he can get to work and keep his key, his keep in the household. So it's like, gotta get it going, gotta get them working. So I um, was coming home and check my mail. I always check the mail when I come home. And there was this letter from Stubbs and Purdue, which is the um, the people who it was the law the law office who actually did the closing of my house. And I'm like, what are they writing me about? And I looked down and said, it's almost a check. Y'all know they, they sent us a Christmas card, so I know doggone well they ain't send no check out for Christmas to all their clients. I know they're not. I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> so I said, it's probably some, you know how they can make junk mail look like checks. It's probably something like that. 
so I opened it up and you guys I got $500 check earnest money back that they did not calculate in my closing back in May here it is December and money's coming up money's to get my car fixed that I don't have to go in and dip in monies that we have put aside for something else. I'm saying this like don't feel like all hope is gone. Because sometimes it's not. God will come at a just moment. And then when I was told Derek, I said, Derek, I just feel like running through the house at how God has provided for us just that quick. And I know he didn't say anything and he was looking strange. And you know, I said, Well, maybe you think I'm crazy because I'm talking about running through the house, praising God. But he told me later that night because I had to go meet my mom and my cousins because we were having a um, our Christmas dinner together. And he told me, he said, Nat, you know what? I wasn't going to say anything to you, but I had just sat on the side of the bed yesterday morning and I talked to God and I told him, God, you know, we got to get this money to get this car fixed. I got to get Nat's car fixed. And, you know, I wish you, not wish, but will you open up a door so that we can get these things done? And he said, Nat, it just shocked me because I wasn't expecting it to happen that quick. But it came the same day. I said, sometimes God tests your faith. He'll put things in your spirit, in your heart, and wait and see how you're going to respond to it. Now... You know, God was already moving on our behalf. And we didn't even know that he was moving on our behalf. Because who knew? That lawyer didn't have to say anything about, we were gone, closing gone, nobody noticed anything. Would never have dug back through those papers to say, hey, look, my earnest money didn't get calculated in there. Would have never said that. And I would have never known. Never known that it was not added in. And I'm telling you, that $500 came on time. I can get my car fixed. And then there's still some extra. Well, I'm going to have to get it towed from one place to the other. So, you know, it just came in perfect timing. You know that I can do things to get my car fixed, get my oil changed, and get it back running on the road. Then I can put this one in the shop, you know, and just believe God for another miracle to get the monies for this one to get fixed that's how that's how I believe you know and some people might say you're crazy you know you just you know they think we're foolish anyway most people think Christians are foolish you know look at what you're going through and you still believe and trust your God yes because he never said it was gonna be easy never said we we're gonna be walking on the red carpet you know he said things will come at us but he would make them bearable he would he would help us get through it. You know, you know, there's so many promises of God. I'm paraphrasing now. Don't go look for that statement in the Bible. I am paraphrasing. You know, because some people take things so technical. Like, I don't see him saying that in the Bible. There's nowhere on paragraph. No, I'm paraphrasing. Just talking and paraphrasing. But, you know, just like he says that, you know, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Meaning that, it's going to come up against you. He didn't say you will not have any weapons formed against you. He said no weapon formed against you. So that means something is going to come up against you. But it won't prosper. It won't go anywhere. Okay? It's just going to, it's going to try to affect you. But God's going to step in and move things out of your way. He'll make stumbling blocks your um, stepping stones. You just got to believe that and hang on to the faith. You know, I was going to I was going to do this for Monday morning for my vlog. I'm 18, but I started talking about weight loss and I'm like, okay, let me just put this video out. This is an extra bonus video. So this is the time of year where people are going through where they feel like they just don't have to give. You don't have to give. You do not have to to give don't get stressed out like that i remember back in the days feeling that way of how was i going to provide for my kids how was i going to give they you know 
I could, how could I, you know, they were fine. They got and they were fine. They didn't have to get the biggest thing. God opened up doors and made ways for me back then. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. He will make a way for you. Just hold on and see with your faithfulness. Okay? You see, you've got to do something too, okay? You know, you always hear people say, you take one step and God take two. That part's not in the Bible. I will tell you, that is not in the Bible. But they paraphrase it and got a gist of it. If you do something, you've got to do something for yourself. You can't just sit there, woe as me. You know, because the Bible says faith without works is dead. Okay? So that means you got to do something. Your faith, you got to act on it. You got to act on it and believe it. So don't sit there, woe is me this time of year. Act on your faith. Speak it into existence. Do other things. You might not have monetary things that you can do, but go do an act of kindness. Maybe you can't give gifts to everybody, but do a wash the dishes when you get finished with Christmas dinner. Clean the kitchen up, sweep the floor, take the trash out. You know, make sure you help tidy up. You didn't give a gift, but you gave your time, your energy. You know, is there anything I can do? Can I come help you cook? I can't bring anything, but I want to do something. You know, there's different ways of getting creativity, of giving of yourself to people. You know, and sometimes everybody's not about a present or monetary things. Some people are in today's society, but those you just have to overlook and keep it pushing, you know. And you watch, God will start blessing you and your family, but you just got to hold on. You just got to believe, okay. Y'all, my message to y'all today, keep the faith, believe. Don't get discouraged this time of year. It, there's so much more out there than just presents and gifts and you know, all this commercialized stuff. Yes, I'm participating in commercialized stuff. I thank God that I am able to participate. But I've been in the situation too when I was not able to give. So I want to encourage someone else out there today. I know how you feel. I know where you're coming from. Just hang on. Hang on. In the words of um, what's his name? Um, Wayne Cooley, Coley on um, Facebook, his famous saying is, help is on the way. Hey, hey, help is on the way. <laughs> so hold on. Help is on the way, you guys. I'll talk with you later. Bye.